Welcome to the Daily Update, where I'll go over the action in the market for Thursday, November 14th, and we'll see how things look for Friday, November 15th. If you've listened to these videos before, you can probably tell my voice is different. I'm really battling a pretty severe cold right now. I sound worse than I feel, but that's probably not much consolation because I do voice-only videos. If I really start to sneeze, I'm probably going to have to pause this however many times I need to do that. So there may be little gaps in the video along the way. Okay, we saw a down day, a little bit more of a severe down day than what we've seen in a while. We've been seeing some things that are causing us some concern with some of our indicators. But for the time being, we are still positive. It looks like a pullback at this point. We haven't even come down to the 20-period moving average yet, but we've been able to work off pretty much all of the indicators in the short and even intermediate term that we're looking extreme. So that concern that we were having has pretty much gone away right now. We'll be evaluating things just to say, okay, is there going to be more weakness? Is this just the beginning of something, or are we just pulling back before we get set to go higher? Now, we had CPI on Wednesday, PPI on Thursday, and the market kind of took some negative reaction to that, even though it came in as expected. But then there were some statements by Chairperson Powell that the market didn't really like, and the market was kind of poised to already pull back anyway. But we haven't switched over negative yet. A big report on Friday is going to be retail sales to try to get an idea of what is the state of of the U.S. economy looking at that aspect because that's a really big part of the economy. Before I get into all the program and, excuse me, I want to explain the program before I get into the different charts. And yes, I've taken some medication, so that kind of messes with the train of thought that I usually like to have here. I have a thing called the SPX Investing Program. It's up, it's going. There's a link that will take you to the website and to a video where you can learn more about that. Feel free to send me an email. If you have any questions, you want to set up a time to talk, we can certainly do that. And you do get access to the videos right after they are available. The daily video is what I really focus on. The other videos that I'll be preparing over the weekend those are meant to tie into the daily video. All right, let's go back and talk about what happened and then look at some charts. We had a lower open, not much. It wasn't a real gap down, but we kept going down after the open. We declined down below the daily pivot at 59.86. That 6,000 level is kind of producing some problems. It's a psychological level. It's not necessarily important from a technical aspect, but the more we have trouble getting above that, the more it may become a technical analysis level of resistance. We got down below the unchanged level, and then we chopped sideways above the 59.75 level. Again, another round area, and we just were able to get down to that. It wasn't necessarily a, a support level, but it's a round number, so it became a support level. Then we fell down below S1 at 59.65. We chopped above and below S1 before declining down to S2 at 59.44, and we closed slightly above S2. We were down 0.6% on still below average volume. Now, one thing to take away, this hasn't been the gangbuster week this week, at least to this point, that we saw last week, and we're seeing below average volume as the market appears to be consolidating. It looked like it was getting exhausted. Then we have the down day on Thursday on below average volume. That could all be just healthy profit taking and not necessarily a change. But we want to watch things. We want to watch our different charts to see if we're getting any clues as to what's happening in those charts. So far, nothing has really turned negative other than we're seeing some weakness internally in the market, and I'll go through that here as I go through the charts. So we are still positive in the short, intermediate, and long term as measured by the moving averages. And inflation, a little bit of a concern in Thursday's session because PPI, even though it came in as expected, there's the market picked up that there was some inflation there. And with how the election turned out and with interest rates going back up 
the market is anticipating economic growth, but as it's shifting from this idea of, okay, inflation is going to keep coming down, growth may be positive, but not necessarily robust. If the economy is able to shift over into more of a pro-growth type of an environment, that's likely going to produce inflation. And so we'll have to watch this balance between the two because the the stock market can go up and inflation can go up and interest rates can go up if everything's growing in the economy. That's seen as positive. It's when inflation is out of control and or growth is just going up too much. That's when the market tends to freak out. And so we're looking for that balance between the two. And interest rates did end up coming down. They were pretty volatile in Thursday's session, but the 10-year yield did drop just a little bit. Even though it seems like not a big deal right now, if you mainly follow U.S. news, um, there's still a lot of geopolitical things going on that could escalate, specifically between Iran and Israel. Okay, small caps, yeah, they had that big week last week, and now we're seeing them pulling back even more. Then Fed Chair Powell did come out and basically said the economy is not sending any signals that we need to be in a hurry to lower rates. Now, the market's pretty much factored in another quarter of a percent cut at the December meeting, but it, that the percentages really dropped after that, at least in Thursday's session. Now, I go over those charts that we look at in the weekly video, so we'll see how the week ends up finishing out. We want to keep an eye on the Middle East. Oil's not really moving all that much. It's right around the 68 level still. And in the short term, where we had a pretty long list, now we just have the stochastics, which are a little bit slower. And plus, we have three different charts on that complete chart that I show. And the Sean Trend Meter coming down, but still giving kind of an extreme positive reading. And we're still looking okay with our long-term trend there. We're above the lines that I focus on with the 150 and 200 a simple moving averages. So no change to the scenario right now. The Fed cut rates last week. It still looks like we're going to have a soft landing. That seems possible. We're waiting for some kind of signs to see if that scenario will change. And so far it has not. The dollar was up, which pressured stocks. The dollar's been really strong since the election. And interest rates were down. We closed at 4.42% with the 10-year yield, where we had been at 4.45% on Wednesday. We're still inverted with the 10 to the three-month yield curve. It's getting close. It's coming back up, but it hasn't crossed over to being normal again yet. Where the 10 to the two, it crossed a while back, and it still continues to be uninverted or looking more normal now. Sentiment is positive. We did tick down. We were getting up to that 68 range. In 75 is kind of where we really get concerned that the market's a little too positive as far as sentiment. But with the down day, we dropped down to 60. It's still positive, but now the context is that we're declining. We are still positive with the trend. The green line's on top, but it's coming down. What's happening, though, is the ADX is starting to roll over, but it hasn't crossed below its moving average yet. If it does cross back below the moving average, that would suggest a weakening trend, but we're still above 20, so we are trending. With the down day, the bias is negative, and now, because this week just really hasn't seen an awful lot of follow-through, it's not been over overly negative, but it certainly hasn't been as positive as what we saw last week. So I changed the momentum over to mixed over the last two, three, four, or five days. The reports that came out, this was probably one of the bigger days for the number of reports that came out. The weekly jobless claims came in a little bit lower than expected. Now, this suggests economic strength, that we're not really seeing any weakness here. They expected 229,000 initial claims. They came in at 217. Last week, it was at 221. So it's actually going down. That's actually showing economic strength there. And we were a little concerned about this with continuing claims because it had kept going up and up and up. It actually declined to 1.873 million, where a week ago it was 1.884 million. And here's PPI. This is the headline number coming in as expected, up 0.2% and up from the 0.1% we saw last time. The inflation part of that came in as expected, up 0.3% and also up from the 0.2% we saw last time there. 
So here are the weekly jobless claims. Well, we're continuing to go down. That means less people are filing for unemployment, and that shows that the employment situation continues to be strong. And after going up with the moving average and with the number itself, the continuing claims, those beyond one week, that declined, and we're leveling out with the moving average, but we haven't quite turned down with that if that continues to show a decrease. And then just to give it a little bit of context, I have the unemployment rate in black that came out with the employment situation report. And then we're seeing a drop off in the initial claims and a little bit of a decline here with the continuing claims. Year over year, PPI going up and the market's taking this a little bit inflationary here with the overall reading the, is the blue line and it's going back up, which again shows some strength that things are actually growing in the economy after coming back down to about the 2% level. But the core, that's the inflation part. That's also starting to go back up. And that's, the market was a little edgy over that one. And then final demand year over year for goods. That's the blue line showing more of a demand and services also continuing to go up. Then intermediate goods, processed and unprocessed, both going up, both the blue line and the yellow line. And then here's our rate of change charts where we're starting to go back up with the PPI here. And the one month is also going back up. Now that shows growth, but is there that balance between growth and inflation that's starting to concern the market? And when we look back over the last year, we're still pretty much flattening out as far as the inflation part. And we're actually declining on a month over month basis when we look at the core PPI. All right, so here we have a real investment advice chart. This is home ownership and the amount of equity that is actually in people's homes against the S&P 500. And you can see there's a pretty strong correlation, at least over the last oh, 30, 40 years or so. People get some equity in their home and they either leave that in there to build value that way. They may refinance to help pay down some debt but they may use some of that equity to actually go in the market. And there's a pretty strong correlation between the two here. The um, What the S&P has been doing, this is Goldman Sachs. They think we're going to get up to 6,300 with over the next 12 months, so a year from now. And then what are the earnings per share outlooks looking like? And they're going up. And, the, and if that's true, that does justify the S&P actually going higher, even though we're at elevated levels when you look at valuation, either looking historically at what earnings reports have already come out versus what the forward earnings are, that's looking expensive. But the idea of earnings going up, people like that. And that shows growth in the economy too. Then Morgan Stanley S&P 500 equity risk premium. It, according to this, there's not an awful lot of risk right now in getting into the stock market. Now, if we start to go down, if we see more than just a pullback that turns into an actual decline, let alone a correction, which we don't know if that's what it's going to develop into, this will start to go back up as there's more risk in actually owning stocks, but it's really been dropping off. And so a lot of folks are like, well, why do I want to put my money on the line? I, I'm not being compensated here. It, when this is higher levels, that just means the risk to reward is more favorable. This going down just means, well, there's not an awful lot of risk in these stocks. And so maybe I would be better off in putting my money elsewhere. All right. Riskier is better. Also kind of confirms here with what we see. And I'm seeing a lot of Bloomberg charts. They must have some kind of an agreement at Isabel Net that they're allowed to use more Bloomberg charts than they were before. Stock investors that are short. Uh, the most reached the highest since 2022. Now, this could actually end up being positive for stocks. And I like to explain this whenever we see this kind of a chart. Short, that means that you want the market to go down. And with every index or ETF or stock, there are always two prices. There's a bid price and an ask price. And if you enter a short position, you actually sell to open that position. I know, how can you sell something you don't own? But it is possible. You basically are borrowing it with the hope of replacing it back at a lower price later. And we're seeing a lot of that really going up right now. But how this is positive is that 
to close out this position, because people that shorted Tesla or Amazon before their earnings, I mean, they're just, they're getting clobbered right now because things went totally the opposite way. Folks that were betting that the market would go down after the election, they've not done well the last week and a half or so. But this is the index of the most shorted stocks. Now, if if we continue to go up, those folks have to get out of the market. If they sell to get in, they have to buy to get out. And that's what we often call a short cover rally or short squeeze, where things just kind of are going up out of control. It's these positions having to close out at that point. And of course, it could be negative because there are people that usually the it's the more experienced, and I don't want to say smarter, but more experienced investors that do this and now if that interests you because in the program that i have i teach how we can make money when the market goes down but we don't do it like this we don't actually short the market we get into what's called inverse mutual funds and etfs so we're going along the etf or mutual fund but it goes up in value if the market actually goes down and that gives you a chance to play the upside and the downside okay the rise in Term premium has yet to impact the PE ratios, but it's worth noting. We're just seeing this is the next 12 months PE ratio. They're expecting it to go up here. And then term premium, that's also going up. This is just meaning that the market is getting a bit overextended here. Then U.S. inflation progress stalled in October. This is CPI that came out on Wednesday, and they have the, the month over month. They want to get down to that. 2% level, but this is a month over month chart. 2% would be an annualized version of that. And then total return performance of various assets going back to really the first of 2000 um, in 2000 to 2024 here. And it's just showing how gold has actually been doing quite well. That's the gray area that we see at the top, followed by stocks. And then Bloomberg has some different indexes. And whether they're bonds, short term or longer term. And then earnings sentiment. When you compare the U.S. to the rest of the world, we're seeing a real growth in the earnings in the S&P 500 anyway, as far as how people feel. Are they, do they feel earnings are going to continue to go up in the U.S.? Yeah. And then here's topics. That's Japan. Seeing a little bit of an improvement there. Then we have the light blue, which are emerging markets, and then the stock 600, that would be Europe over here. Not as It's coming up, but not as robust as what we're seeing in the U.S. I, I did look around Twitter for a little bit, but didn't really see anything that I felt was worth sharing there. Yardeni didn't really have any charts worth looking at either. So here's the intraday chart where we didn't see that much of a change in the open. It was a bit of a lower open, but then immediately we saw some selling, which took us down negative below the daily pivot. We came down here, didn't quite hit S1, tried to see a bit of a bounce up, chopped sideways, and then we ended up falling down below S1, but we kind of stalled right there. And then we just chopped above and below S1 before actually going all the way down to S2. And then seeing a little bit of buying going into the close. So we closed a little bit above S2. The intraday um, chart here, we are seeing a little bit of weakness still in the initial overnight session. But the futures were relatively muted. And then after PPI came out, that's when we started to see some weakness coming into the market, which carried through into the cash session there. Even though both the blue line and the red line declined, we're still encouraged that the blue line is above the red line, even though they're on different scales. And this, in the context, didn't have a good day between growth to value here for the S&P. But overall, if you go back to Halloween, we have been seeing more of an uptrend here. The end of day chart, growth was down, but down a little bit less than value for the large caps, down more with the mid caps, and down quite a bit more here with the small caps. So looking at the end of day charts, we saw a real improvement with small cap growth to value, but that's now falling back. Saw a little bit of a turn down with mid cap growth to value and a bit of a downturn here, but still holding up in a longer term uptrend when we look at S&P growth to value. And came down just a actually we were up a little bit here with the growth versus value ETF and we're up out of the rainbow. So this is still looking fairly healthy for the time being. 
And the discretionary to staples ratio was pretty much flat after it had been really showing a sign of improvement. And that's positive for the market. If we do see more of a decline and this ratio declines a little bit, if not goes sideways, that could end up being positive as well. As far as our trend, we're rolling over, but we haven't quite crossed below the moving average yet. So we're still in a trending environment that's strengthening until we cross below the moving average. What's giving us a little bit of a concern is we're seeing the green line coming down and the red line going up, but we're still positive because the green line's on top. And short term, not quite below the moving average yet, green line coming down, red line going up. And we are dropping below average with volume. That could be positive too. The fact that we're going sideways to now down a little bit on a decrease in volume, that's more of a technical analysis 101 type of observation when you see a decrease on or a, a decline on a decrease in value. It's if we see a pickup in volume, that's when we start to get more concerned. Sentiment, we ticked up just a little bit, but we're at a much lower level with the VIX than where we were while we were leading up to the election. And also a bit of a tick up here with the bar chart. We're seeing a little bit of an upward move with the VIX of the VIX. That's measuring the volatility of the VIX. And the momentum of the VIX continues to be down as measured by the MACD. And so we're probably matching up fairly close as we go through November and into December where the VIX tends to decline. That's usually indicating that stocks are going up. Tick down just a little bit with this fear gauge and we actually tick up a little bit here with this other fear gauge. So that's more of a confirmation. We did get the latest reading from the American Association of Individual Investors. Now, this is a week ago. And after the election, oh, rah, 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 everything's wonderful. So we did see an improvement. We're above this green line here, which means they're getting kind of positive. But when we really get concerned is if they come all the way up above this pink line right here. So they're not necessarily overly optimistic about things. That could put call ratio went up with the down day. And now after getting extreme with the five day, we're starting to turn back up and that could be negative. And this is a longer term look at that chart and showing other times when we finally bottomed here with the five day chart and then started to go back up. You can kind of match what happened with stocks after that. And usually they would end up going down. But the 10 day chart, which is a little longer term than the five day, that continues to decline. Volatility risk premium still pretty low. That is not picking up even with the decline that we saw on Thursday. So that's not really flashing any real warning signs right now. Advanced decline line rolling over here, both with price and volume, but still above the moving averages. And seeing a drop off here with our five-day new highs, new lows. That's five-day moving average. And we're seeing a little bit of an expansion over the last few sessions of the new lows, but it's more of a contraction of new highs. We had been going up with the 10-day, but now that's starting to level off. And we're actually turning a little bit negative here with accumulation distribution, where we're dropping below the moving average. This is a smart money indicator. As long as we were above the red line, that's more positive. Now that we're dropping below it, that's turning more negative. And this is something that I've been watching for about a week now, the take in money flow, which is another smart money indicator because this combines price and volume together and how it's calculated. We've been kind of chopping sideways below zero, but now the red line is starting to go down a little bit, even though it ticked up a little bit with the histogram here, but this is still looking more negative. It's certainly not showing any strength right now. And we're rolling over and actually starting to cross below the midpoint with the chicken oscillator. So it was rolling over after Wednesday, it's now turning negative again after Thursday. And we're coming down, but still positive with the vortex. The green line's coming down, the red line's going up. And we're in the short term, we're actually dropping below zero with the advanced decline ratio. That's the blue line. Longer term, we're declining, but we haven't crossed below zero yet. So seeing a little bit of weakness here when we look at the cumulative advanced decline line based on price for the S&P, it's coming down. Then coming down with volume, but we're not seeing any real big move, at least as of right now. Seeing a little bit more weakness here when we compare the NYSE advanced decline line with the S&P, the red line's coming down quicker than what we're seeing with price. Now, these are two completely different things. 
but sometimes we can see the movement of both of those and to see which one is moving faster. The cumulative advanced decline line on the NYC based on price, we did drop below the moving average. Coming down, but still just about at the moving average with the N regular NYSE advanced decline line. Also down to the moving average with this other NYSE advanced decline line. So we're dropping off here with the common stock based on price and volume. Coming down with the advanced decline line here, but we're still at the moving average with the NYSE common stock. Coming down, but still above the moving average with the S&P, the mid caps just a little bit above the moving average with the small cap. So we haven't really switched over negative. It'll be more negative if we drop below the moving average. Coming down, but still positive with those stocks in the S&P above their 20-day moving averages. The 50 is going down, but still above 50, so it's positive. Declining with the 100 and actually going up a little bit here with the 200. And then this is an area that I've been kind of pointing out here. This dashed line, that's a pivot point from the previous month that this was calculated. And we actually fell below that a little bit. And we're seeing the breaking of pivot point support, not only here on the S&P, but when we look at the NASDAQ and NASDAQ 100 as well, and the Dow. So these are areas that had been holding up. We're a little bit concerned because we're dropping below those levels currently. Even though volume was up a little bit here. It's still below the moving average that I have plotted there. So we're seeing a bit of a decline with the 20, 50, and 200 a moving averages on the S&P. We're no longer extreme with the Stoke RSI. The Williams Percent R is no longer extreme. Coming down with the CCI 14 and the CCI 20. The Stochastics, just barely not extreme here with the short, short-term Stochastic. We're still extreme in the intermediate term, but we haven't, we've crossed below the moving average, but we haven't fallen below the extreme reading yet. Starting to tick down here with the long-term stochastic chart. Coming down, but still positive with the force index. And coming down to the lines here when the condition of the short-term trend based on 20 periods. But we're still above the simple and exponential moving averages. So we haven't even reached that level yet. And we're no longer extreme. We're in the plus two channel with our standard deviations chart. Intermediate term, dropping slightly below zero with the balance of power. So that's turning a little bit more negative. The condition of the 50 period moving average, we're coming down, but we're still above this red line, which is the triple exponential moving average, which moves faster. So the, the intermediate term trend is still holding up. And we're still positive here with the go, no go. Now, be aware of this kind of chart here. If we see more of a decline, some of these bars may redraw and actually turn more negative. Coming down, but still above the midpoint with the highest high value. But the TTM squeeze continues to go up. So that's positive. And after, the standard deviation goes back over 10 periods. We're starting to come down now as we've been chopping sideways, more or less, after the big push up here. Standard deviation measures speed, not direction. Coming down, but still positive with the ease of movement. And still positive, but flat with the Arun indicator. And I have to pause this. Okay, sorry about that, folks, even though there was probably no time delay for you. But we're still above zero here with the oscillator when we look at the Arun indicator as well. McClellan Oscillator, this is one of the areas of concern. We've been below zero now for the last few days. And when that is below zero, we're starting to go down with the summation index based on price and volume. And this, to me, is a primary indicator that has been giving us some warning signs for a few days now. We're also below zero with the, the NYSE McClellan Oscillator. So now we're starting to go down with the summation index based on price and volume. You can see we're actually dropping below this previous low with volume. Is that a concern where we haven't really dropped below this previous low based on price? But this is looking at the NYSE. Momentum, still looking positive, could be rolling over a bit. We did cross above the moving average based on price. We never really did based on volume. So that's kind of a concern there. We're declining, but still barely positive with the Swindon trading oscillator based on price. We've started to cross below zero based on volume. That's turning more negative. 
coming down with the PMOs that are rising, the buy signals are starting to decline. We're still going up the flat with the PMOs that are above zero. Not an awful lot of damage has been done, at least to this point. We'll see what Friday brings. The short-term momentum with the slope oscillator continues to go up, and the MACD continues to go up, even though it's slowing down a bit here. So the short and intermediate term momentum continues to be positive. And now the long term, we're crossing above the moving average with the TRIX and just barely above the moving average with the KST. And the Copic curve is still positive here. And we're coming down, but we're no longer extreme with the uh, Sean trend meter. Declining, but above 50 with the money flow, as well as the ultimate oscillator. Declining, but still above the advancing moving average with on balance volume. And the RSI more intermediate term based on 14 periods is declining, but still above 50. We had become extreme with the short term RSI based on nine periods. That is declining and no longer extreme positive. We're still above all the moving averages here. So really no damage has been done, at least yet, to the trends. And we're no longer extreme with the distance away from the 20 period moving average. That's this top area that we use like an oscillator. And we're no longer extreme when we measure the distance away from the 50 period moving average. We've, we're still neutral though with the elders impulse system for the S&P. We're still positive with the parabolic SAR. We're declining with the bullish percent index. We had been coming back up. Now over the last few days, we've been going down. That's changing the context to negative. And coming down here with the NYSE bullish percent index, also declining with the NASDAQ 100 bullish percent index. No real support levels yet. We're going to have to see more of a decline to hit some of those moving averages and other support levels that we see. But we're not even really that close to them, at least at this time. Seeing a little bit more negative action here with the hike in ASHI, where it had been positive with the open candles. Now we're starting to see black candles, which is more negative. Pointing down, but still positive with the Kegi chart. The Renko chart is still positive, and the three-line break is still positive. So we're seeing a bit of a mix there. Long-term coming down, but still looking okay with the 150 and 200-day moving averages. I showed this yesterday, and it takes a long time for these signals to change, but I just want to show this, and then I'll point it out over the weekend. This is the Johor Chak method, and I, nice, good, solid Midwestern name there. Where for most of 2024, we were pegged all the way at 10. Right before the election, we dropped down to 8. After the election, we shot back up to 10. Now we're coming back down to 8 again. Not turning negative, but just something we want to be aware of. And it was still positive with the Keller market model across all time frames on all the different indexes. We're negative with the in the short and intermediate term with bonds based on price. Negative across the board with commodities, the dollars in an uptrend in the short and intermediate term. And all the sectors were down with industrials being down the most, followed by healthcare and discretionary. We had energy actually bouncing up. It was the one sector that was positive. And saw some blue and green with Canada. They seem to be partying up pretty good there. And then the euro sets a 52-week low. That's against the dollar as we're seeing dollar strength and euro weakness. And the dollar set of another 52-week high. We have the NASDAQ crossing down below 19.1 and 19.2. Healthcare, which is more defensive, it had a BPI cross back below 50. And we're seeing a little bit more of a downward move with the red line, which is the equal weight version of the S&P when we compare it to the S&P itself. And we did fall below this pivot point here. And I pointed that out with the S&P. We also dropped below this R2 pivot point level with the Dow. We're still neutral with the diamonds, with the Elder's Impulse system. This is the NASDAQ. And the NASDAQ seems to pay more attention to these pivot points. This had been providing an area of support, and we fell down below that. We also fell down below this R2 level with the NASDAQ 100. That's a little bit of a concern. And we're still neutral, though, with the QQQs when looking at the Elder's Impulse system. The momentum for the NASDAQ 100 is positive, but we're rolling over with the PPO. And, of course, the small caps just shot up, gave everybody a lot of hope, and has been giving a lot of that back. That's the negative part. The positive part is we're still above this R2 level. That was the low that was set, and we were able to close up off of that slightly. Are we going to be able to hold this level, or are we going to fall down through it? 
Then we look at the Russell 2000 small caps coming down, but still above 50 with the RSI. But the context is we're going down and the momentum is positive, but rolling over with the MACD. And we're still neutral, though, with the Elder's Impulse system for the small caps. Mid caps, they did break below this R2 pivot point. So that's a little bit more negative there. But they're still neutral when we look at the Elder's Impulse system. The Wilshire coming down after recently setting an all-time high, but still has a long ways to go to get to its 50-day moving average. Seeing a bit of a pullback here with the total U.S. stock ETF, but not really turning drastically negative, at least yet. Financial sector was down a quarter of a percent after setting an all-time high. The FANG index also set a recent all-time high, but it did pull down 0.41%. And we've been watching this, a shorter term trend line here. that We've just not been able to get above. We got above it, but we closed below it on Wednesday. Well, now we're a little bit further below it after Thursday. So this may be providing some overhead resistance. And then looking at the big stocks, Apple was up 1.38%, back above its 50-day moving average, where Amazon was down 1.22% after setting an all-time high. Probably some profit taking there. Microsoft still above both the 50 and 200 day moving averages. So that's hanging in there, up 0.4%. Google was down 1.84%, but still above both moving averages. Meta was down almost half a percent, still above its 50 day moving average. Nvidia was up a third of a percent, pretty much looking like it's going sideways here. And then Tesla, after really running up, has seen some profit taking over the last few days, but still looking positive longer term. Netflix set another new all-time high. So that's one of the big stocks that actually seems to be doing well here. And then we look at the comparison between U.S. stocks and world stocks, decreasing with the correlation in the short term and in the long term, as U.S. stocks have been performing better. Oil not really moving all that much right now. We're watching that for geopolitical reasons. The dollar just screaming up here. We're into the high 106 range now. If we get up into the 107s, we're kind of matching a high set back in 2023 here. This may provide some overhead resistance. If we break through that, as Jim Morrison would say, break on through to the other side, we'll see if that's going to put some more pressure on stocks. Then we're back to going down slightly with the 10-year yield here, kind of chopping around over the last few sessions and going back up just a little, actually down just a little bit here based on price because these are ETFs, so they calculate a little bit differently. And still above the moving average when we look at our growth-to-value ratios with the Qs to S&P, discretionary to S&P still looking pretty solid, and we still are above the moving average when we compare large-cap growth to large-cap value. And so the large caps, mid caps, and small caps showing a decline here, but still above advancing moving averages. Trying to go back up here with the S&P to utilities ratio. If this could continue to go up, that means the S&P is outperforming utilities. And we tick back up here, but overall we've been declining when we look at the staples, more defensive to S&P 500 ratio. So what's our outlook for Friday? It will be options expiration. So that can make the day kind of crazy. And it's the monthly cycle that will be expiring. And that's where you tend to see more. I mean, there's options that expire every Friday. But the monthly one can often be with more volume and more volatility. We are still positive for right now. And we're in a period of positive seasonality. We're not necessarily short-term overbought right now. We've worked most of that off. But we're wondering... Has the market become more exhausted? And that's why we're seeing a pullback currently. We're going to get import and export prices, retail sales, as well as industrial production and capacity utilization in Friday's session. And then business inventories will be coming out. We want to keep an eye on all the crazy stuff going on in the world in case it impacts the markets. So here is a look at the end of the week for the economic calendar. And then we're going to be getting retail sales and that's a pretty big deal for the markets here seasonally for november 15th we're positive with the dow neutral to positive with the s p neutral to negative with the nasdaq so not really getting any real clear direction that way we are getting ready to finish up options expiration week where we tend to be up more than down and we see a little bit of positive seasonality here according to the stock traders almanac but beware 
right after this on Monday, we're going to go through a period of weak seasonality that lasts for a few days. And is the market getting set up to actually follow what has historically happened before? Friday is the second most positive day of the week in 2023, and it's the most positive day so far in 2024. And now we're kind of coming up here. We're getting out of this positive time where now we're starting to go back into the negative time as far as Tom Bally's research. And then this will be the last time I show this chart. We're pretty much beyond the blackout period as stocks have been reporting their earnings. But seasonally, now it doesn't mean we go straight up here, but... Carson has this as looking for, forward positively when we look at seasonality here. Also, after the election, tends to be positive according to this chart as well as the next chart. So what are our warning signs? We do have this Hindenburg Omen that's confirmed that's in the background, but nothing has changed on that chart for quite a while, so I haven't been showing it. Now, our smart money indicators are now looking more negative. We dropped below the moving average with accumulation distribution. The chicken money flows drop below the midpoint. The chicken oscillators also drop below the midpoint as well. And so this is causing us some concern. We're not seeing a lot of smart money coming in and buying right now. And then the S&P and NYSE McClellan oscillators are below zero in the short term, which makes the summation indexes go down, which is more intermediate term. And then the five-day equity put call ratio is going it should be yeah it's going up after it had been declining and how come i'm not advancing here okay and then the positive signs we still have the vortex even though it's showing some weakness that we are positive there growth the value for the large cap still it's pulled back but still looking okay pulling back a little with discretionary to staples but still looking fairly strong the 10-day equity put call ratio is still going down the advanced decline lines were still above the moving averages there, and we're still above 50 with our 20, 50, 100, and 200 a moving average studies. The parabolic SAR is still positive, as is the Swinland trading oscillator based on price, but we're dropping below uh, zero based on volume. And then the S&P, NASDAQ, and NYSE bullish percent indexes, but the context is that all of those are going down now. They're positive because they're, they're above the midpoint. And our oscillators are positive here, but if we see more weakness, they could start to even show more rollover signs. Ease of movement is still positive. The money flow and ultimate oscillator, these still continue to be positive. Financial sector is still positive, and even though it's showing a little bit of weakness, the momentum for the NASDAQ 100 is still positive. Our conclusion, we're still positive with seasonality, but next week, that's a little bit shorter term, we might have some historical weakness coming in for the week after options expiration. And right now, it just looks like we're pulling back. But I put a question mark there because even declines usually start as a pullback. Then in the short term, we're positive, and that's where we're pulling back, question mark. We've at least worked off some of this extreme condition that we were seeing, which could prime the market to go back up. But it could also prime the market to continue to go down. In the intermediate term, we are seeing some weakness developing here with some of our primary indicators, but we're still positive since we're above the 50-day moving average. We continue to be positive in the long term. Thank you. Again, thank you for putting up with my nose and my voice. I hope you have a really good day, and I will talk to you in the next video.